welcome back to CTN. I'm your host, Robert Van Sluden. In computer science, concurrency is the concept of several computations that are executing simultaneously and asynchronously. Simultaneously is an interesting issue because they may be time sliced on a single core, so-called timeshare or they may actually be running on multiple cores, which is very common in modern architectures. The reason for that is that you can't just keep increasing the clock speed of a CPU indefinitely. The solution to getting more computational power is to have multiple cores. The problem is, then you get into the issue of having to implement concurrent programming. They're asynchronous in the sense that you there's no way of predicting what point in the execution path one computation is relative to the other one. And this makes timing and sharing of data complicated. In iOS, because these devices are handheld, small devices, relatively speaking, relative to desktops, there are limited resources. Um, an obvious one is screen size. You don't want too much going on on these screens at any one time, otherwise it wouldn't be very useful. The CPUs are relatively slow compared to desktops. All right, that's changing. There's limited memory smaller. And one of the big factors is battery. Um, battery is really the limiting factor of the, of the future of these devices. So if you're going to ask more from the CPU, you're going to consume more battery. If, if you're going to use your screen or your video processing more intensively, you're going to demand more of your battery. This brings up the whole notion that you want to limit multitasking. I think the other aspect of this is that really iOS's notion of focusing on one thing at any given time. iOS CPUs, they've evolved. Going back as far as we need to, to the A4, which is the um, iPhone 4, which is the, the the oldest iPhone that can run um, iOS 7. It's a 32-bit single core. The A5, which is what's in the iPad 2 and the 4S, um, is a 32-bit dual core. So now we're starting to get into multi-core processors. So now you get into the notion of true simultaneous execution. And the A6, which is what is in the iPhone 5, is a 64-bit dual core. It's also in the, um, the iPad Retina. Now, there's two types of currency, and the first one we're going to talk about is the notion of foreground and background. Um, multiple iOS apps can be running simultaneously. The most obvious ones are for instance, you could be running, you know, listening to a podcast um, on your podcast uh, app and looking at some maps on your iPhone. So you got two simultaneous applications that are actually running. They could also be sitting in background waiting for alerts or, or collecting information on a periodic basis. However, only one app can be running in foreground at any given time. In other words, what's on the screen, what is controlling the user interface, is really only is, is only one application. Um, by default, when you put an app into background, it, it, it only has five seconds to complete what it needs to do, to do its cleanup, to store its data, whatever it needs to do. Unless you do something different in your development of the application, you get that five seconds when you go into background. You can go into background when you know you hit the home button and so on and so forth. To write an application that 
use this background, you have to make a change in the um, in the parameters of the app, and you can do that through the Capabilities tab by selecting the project to make sure you have the target, and you enable background modes. In other words, you turn on one of several modes. And there's several reasons, and you could take a look at this that listed here, why an application um, wants to be in background. There's another type of concurrency, which is referred to as threads. Now, keep in mind that iOS is built on top of FreeBSD kernel. It's basically a Unix kernel, and which supports POSIX threads. Now, a thread, unlike a Unix process, threads are lightweight and share a common memory space. If you've taken a course in Unix, you the notion of forking, which ends up creating a, a copy of a process, and then you make a decision as to what you're running at that point, and you're in different memory space, and if you're if you want to communicate, you end up creating pipes, for example, so on and so forth. Threads are much lighter weight and sit in the same memory space, but they're running concurrently. And they may actually be running on different cores or time sliced on the same core. The app's main thread, which is the only one we've been running on so far, the um, so-called thread one, and a lot of applications are just run on the single thread, the, the simple ones is responsible for processing events such as touches and doing the drawing. And, you know, you touch something and you do some minor processing and then you display and then you wait and then it sits there in, in an inactive state waiting for the next event to happen. However, if you want to do something more time intensive, computational, or a common one is accessing the network, which is always somewhat slow because you're waiting for services and so forth. You shouldn't do that on the main thread because you should never really block the user interface for any length of time of significance. So you shouldn't perform it on the main thread. So in other words, <laughs> you want another thread. Um, the In terms of safety, now when you get into allocating, communicating data between threads, you got to start dealing with the notion of collisions between multiple threads and access of data. Now the foundation framework is so-called thread safe. Um, in other words, it's designed such that there's proper semaphore locking to lock data while one thread's accessing and the other thread is waiting to access. However, UIKit is not. All right, and this brings up the, the whole issue that, well, you shouldn't be trying to do user interfaces, user interface stuff on different threads. You should just leave that up to the main thread. And also, so far we've always had um, non-atomic um, properties when we, we design our own classes, but there is this notion of an atomic property and so you just say atomic rather than non-atomic. And what happens is when the compiler does the synthesis of the accessor methods, it will actually do the appropriate locking and unlocking to deal with multi-thread access. Now in closing, because this is just an introductory episode, there's a couple classes of interest that you probably should dig into the documentation for. There is this notion of an NS thread, which is your basic thread, but that isn't the one you would normally use. There's the notion of an NS operation, which is a operation you want to do. Now, it doesn't necessarily, you have to do something addition, but let's start there. This is an abstract class, and there's two concrete classes. There's invocation operation, which is an operation that works based on a target action basis. And there's one that works based on a block operation. And you can take a look at the previous episode to get a basic understanding of blocks.
Now, just because you use one of these, you could also subclass NS operation and create your own. Just because you you use one of these doesn't mean it's multi-threaded. The way you get multi-threaded is by use of a queue, and you have an NS operation queue. So you'd create an operation and you'd place it on a queue, and then it would spin off a separate thread and perform the operation. You can get pretty sophisticated with these things because you can control the priority of them, you control relationships, and so on and so forth. At this point, <clears throat> we've introduced the two primary notions of concurrency. We have background and foreground, and we have threading. We've taken a look a little bit at the data access issue. There's the, the notion that the UI kit is not thread safe, but foundation is. And there's the notion of atomic and non-atomic properties. And I've also introduced some classes. We're going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Check out the website, cocotouchnetcast.com.